the debate here is not really about Sabbath. It's actually about the authority mm. of Yeshua. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. I think maybe the whole world needed to hear those words. Hey everybody, welcome to Grafted. I'm Sam, this is Tom. We are here, we're gonna do another reaction video to The Chosen. This time we're gonna do season two, episode six. And our producers have picked four clips that we have not seen. We haven't seen the episode at all. Um, so we're going to go through those. It's going to be fun. And we are elders at a Messianic congregation, and we're all about the first century Jewish context of the Bible. So we're really excited sure. to again jump into The Chosen because they do such a great job of painting this first century Jewish. <laughs> great painters. Uh -huh. Picture. So here we go. Should we do it? <laughs> all right. All right. Four. Clip one of four. Press play. The fever hasn't broken yet. It's five days. He will heal. He always okay, does. Back and in time. What if our oldest son doesn't heal? Hmm? That is why I must teach a beardar how to make the showbread today. Now, our family share in the secret traditions of Aaron's priestly lineage will be damaged. Yes, Yafa. I'm aware. Yafa. It's yet one more in a never ending string of curses. You. Always thinking in catastrophes. And you, always thinking it's another sunny day. <laughs> Send for the boy. Twelve cakes. Up here. We, we forgot how to pause. Israel. There we go. So, is that a baker's hat? <laughs> I think it is. <laughs> I think it is. It said, show, he said showbread. Uh -huh. So there is this particular family, according to rabbinic Jewish history, oh. that they're the only family that knew the secret recipe to the showbread mm. in the holy place. It's not like the baked bean recipe. It's not <laughs> different recipe. <laughs> so I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he's the high priest. I but. was I was thinking priest, but I wasn't thinking baker's hat. That's really funny. But he still would have been a, a priest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Right. That makes sense because he's making the bread right. of the presence. Right. Okay. That's interesting. Will you keep going? Yeah. But the, the bread is still here. Why didn't God eat the Abba? God doesn't need food. It's called the bread of the presence because it's a reminder of his presence in our lives. A symbol that he sits at our table dwells in our midst. What happens to the old bread? In the law of Moses, it was written that Aaron and his son shall eat it in a holy place, since it is for him the most holy portion of Aaronite's food offerings, a perpetual due. I always wonder where you and Sabo went every Shabbat. Yes, <laughs> we come here to eat the bread that has been removed, provided neither of us had lain with his wife that morning. Don't you leave with him every night, Abba? <laughs> um, that is a discussion for another time. Indeed. <laughs> now, we must replace this with the hot bread as an offering to Adonai. Reuben? So, there's an interesting uh, rabbinic Jewish tradition also that mm. says that the bread stayed hot all week long. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. No, it's just tradition, but I think that one's kind of fun. What day of the week did they replace the bread on? On Shabbat. On Shabbat. Yeah. Okay. And then it would so, stay hot all week long. I mean, that's the sure. the legend, if you will. But I kind of like that. It's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Still fresh baked bread seven days later. You'd sell a lot of bread that way if you, you would get a, get a bakery. Simeon. <laughs> Levi. Judah. Shimalek. A big guitar. Go home. Tell your mother I sent you and that everything's going to be fine. Listen, I are you alone. Where is your protection? The king has sent me on a mission. It said that no one is to know anything about it. I've arranged to meet my men at a certain place. David, my understanding, you and the king are not on friendly terms. I've been sent on a mission from the king. Please, I haven't eaten in days. And I know my men <laughs> haven't either. They're in hiding. We could make do with five loaves of bread, anything. I have no ordinary bread. What about that? That was replaced by the hot bread. still holy bread. You know the law of Moses. And I know the Pequot Nefesh. Have the men kept themselves from women? Truly, they have. And always, they've been in hiding at Gebeah, waiting for me for days. You must be quick. Hmm. So remember. 
What I'm about to give you is sacred. Life is more sacred than bread. If Zol finds out I helped you, you won't get to keep mine. I know. And I'm not sorry. Something is going to come through you. Mm. I can feel it. Mm. Something bigger, more exciting. I don't know what. There was nothing bigger or more exciting than that giant. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Ooh, Man, that's there's cool. so much. There's so much oh going gosh. on here. Like, <laughs> first of all, it's so cool to see this scene, right? Like of scripture coming to life. I wasn't expecting this. I wasn't expecting it at all. Like, so, this have David come through the door. Oh right. my gosh, that's so cool. So clearly, he's the high priest. I get it now. Hmm. But wow, he was saying. I mean, this is such a even a controversial passage that's, sure. that's talked about also uh, by Yeshua talking about Shabbat. Uh, but I love how he was saying that this was to preserve life, mm. which is this concept in in mm. well, in Judaism that you know to preserve life, you can you know essentially violate other commandments because right. that's the greatest mm -hmm. commandment is to preserve life. Right. So he's David's appealing to that, uh, although it's maybe a little. What was the phrase uh, he used? Did you pick up on that? He said something about nefesh, didn't he? Pakuach nefesh. Yeah, okay. that's the like preserve like this principle oh. that I'm talking about. Okay, okay. And so, yeah, it's a wow. It's a cool way that they're mm. they're showing, but this is a, also a really sad scene, right? He mm. takes the bread and then afterwards, uh, oh, Saul right. comes in and he kills them all. Wow. Uh, I can't remember how many thousands of of. Uh, Wow, Levites or priests were mm -hmm. killed. So it's a it's a really controversial, it's a heavy, heavy scene. Yeah, and David actually kind of misleads him. Also, mm -hmm. he says on a mission from the king, which is only sort of true. Right. And uh, but wow, that's a mm -hmm. a very well done scene. Mm -hmm. Interesting the portrayal of of David too. You mm -hmm. know, it's like your imagination always has different views of mm -hmm. what what they look like or what they sound like, and so like to see. Who they picked for the scene is just—it's just fun. It's just fun, fun to see for sure. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's interesting too that in the text in that passage, it, he actually takes Goliath's sword with him from that priest. I, I guess it was stored there for some reason. But you also have to remember that Goliath was a giant, and that sword would have been pretty darn big. Big sword. <laughs> big sword. <laughs> really big sword. So I don't know. It's just—it's just interesting that it, that even he's reflecting on. You know the Lord's doing something, but killing the killing that giant was the biggest thing like ever, right? You know, but but little does David know maybe that like there's so much more. But and he's getting and he's taking this gigantic sword that he I don't even know how he would wield it like to be honest. But right, huge sword, which is pretty cool. The other thing that's interesting note and in, is that when David kills Goliath, mm -hmm. he's the head of Goliath is sent to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It says in the text. Yeah. But that's interesting because when David kills Goliath, Jerusalem mm. is ruled by the Jebusites. Right. So David hasn't become mm -mm. the king, hasn't become the city of David, hasn't become right. the capital of Israel yet. Right. So there's this foreshadowing mm. even of, hey, we're going to come and we're going to take this city right. and it's going to become the capital. Mm. And some people mm. argue that, that Golgotha... Yeah. This is called the place of the skull, skull, mm -hmm. because it's where they buried Goliath's head. Right. Yeah. That's a big deal. And so then, you, of course, Jesus is crucified right. on Golgotha, and his feet, you know, in yeah. symbolically, mm -hmm. crush the head wow. of the serpent because Goliath represents. Mm. Satan yeah. in the battle of good versus evil. Right. right? I mean, he's this anti-God figure. Yeah. That's yeah. who Goliath is. He's defiant yeah. of the God of Israel, right? Mm -hmm. And so he, you know, Yeshua symbolically crushes that mm -hmm. anti-God spirit or you know entity, mm -hmm. whatever, however you want to say it. That's awesome. That is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. All right. Let's go. Clip two. Oh, no. Okay, 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 okay. So we left off last time. Wow. Really heavy. Controversy. Controversy. Really heavy, hard stuff. What's going on? But here we are. Oh, and side note, 
since we're looking upstairs at Peter, we've gotten a couple comments on the length of Peter's tunic. Mm -hmm. And I've said a couple things. <laughs> I don't have any problem with it, just to say that. But it's also funny to note, somebody pointed out, well, it's because he's a fisherman. He has a short tunic. Somebody also pointed out that James and John were fishermen too, and theirs isn't quite as long, so I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> Is it a personality thing? I don't know, I don't know. I'm just style. Just it's asking a, questions. It's just a style asking preference. We all have style preferences. <laughs> Clearly, t shirts are fine with you. Uh, you know? I'm a pocket tea guy. <laughs> <laughs> what do you store in that pocket? Not a tiny mug. Hmm. <laughs> 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 we digress. Okay, let's keep going. Wait, wait. That reminds me of a joke of one of our viewers. Mm -hmm. And they sent it in. And it's Priya Rachel. And she said, a tanner and a fisherman walk into a bar. Mm -hmm. And then a Roman soldier walks in. And the tanner says to the fisherman, quick, hide. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I hope I thank hope she you. made that up. Thank you. I think, I, yeah, you I think she, she made totally that up. made that up. That you're not gonna find that one in a what, a joke book. Uh, what kind of joke book? <laughs> a would Bible that be? joke book. I would like that. Mm. A Bible joke book. Okay. Oh, anyway, <laughs> if you like what you're seeing, if you like what we're doing, we love producing this content. And if you want to partner with us, you can click on the link in the description below to donate and to help support what we're doing here. We'd love to have you with us. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. All right. Shall we keep going? Let's do it. <laughs> Mm. It's good, he's meditating on that passage right. that Philip gave him, right? You think Matthew's ever been in a place like that? I don't think so either. Round Over there, Hebrew dogs. Hmm. Excuse me. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> well, I got a question real quick. Do you think that that the Romans and the Jewish guys would be hang, hanging out in the same place like that? I mean, this is just, not a, just a question. I'm just asking a question. This is clearly not an upstanding establishment. That's true. So, right? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just could be. <laughs> I'm just curious. Could I'm be just curious. Have you seen a woman with long dark hair? She she may be distraught. Are you friends of Lilith? No. It sounds like Lilith. That witch took me for everything I have at Knucklebones. It's married. You know where she is now? Knucklebones? I think she won a lot of money at cards. It sounds uh, like it. Far. We'll cover more ground if we split. Not doing that. We can meet at the stables. The plot thickens. Mary can obviously take care of herself. You can't. What if you were cut off from Jesus by something in your past? Wouldn't you want help getting back to him as soon as mm. possible? Wow. Wow. Okay. We split up. North, east, south, west. Huh? I go north. Boys? <laughs> Founder. I, I just got to say, though, for, before we get into that, Ma Matthew's heart right there was just, man, that was like pure gold. Mm. It's like, you know, wouldn't you want help? And then that's that's a picture of what the body of Messiah, what we do yeah. for each other, right? Like, you, one of the things that we like to emphasize in our congregation, too, is that you don't, you don't just meet together on Saturday or on Sunday or if you're in a church, whatever. Like, you don't just come together that one time and, and then go do your own thing. It's like, you need those check-ins with these people that you're running with, that you're walking with. We call them the minor heart tweaks, right? Like the things that, 
that just keep you keep you in line, keep you moving, keep you keep you going the right direction. And even you know you get a crisis, it's like you need your friends, you need your brothers, you need your sisters to get you back mm-hmm. in to help you to believe the believe the truth. You know, and right. so encourage and strengthen right. one another. It's part of the ministry of the body. Right, and I think I know there's been a lot of controversy on how the yeah. chosen's portraying uh, Miriam here, but. I mean, it's also, whether it's true or not, it's also just real life. People right. make mistakes. For and sure. People uh, have trouble uh, going back to their old life. Mm-hmm. And so they're, I think they're just trying to make it real and right. human. Right. Whether, and so, whether it's true or not, right? who knows? But is it human? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. I mean, not, not us, of course. We're talking about <laughs> other people. <laughs> Moving on. Yeah. Let's get, I think we're about to get serious here. Okay, sorry. I thought I was... Oh, she is dreaming you. Can you walk? I'm not going anywhere. Hmm. We have to go back. No, I can't. Come on, Mary. He told us to come for you. No. No. He already fixed me once. Hmm. And they broke again. Hmm. I can't face him. Mm. I'm a bad person. Have you? No. My whole life. All for me. No faith. Mm. I do have faith in him. But just not in me. Mm. Mm. I'm learning more about Torah and God because of you. Mm. I'm studying harder because you are such a great student. Mm. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I mean, right? It's I just can't help but think of the scripture, you know, but while we were yet sinners, mm. Messiah died for us. Right? And and then also, so it's all about him and what he's done and yet she needed Yeah. Matthew here just to like right. To lift her up. I mean, yeah. that's what you were saying earlier. It's right. like we need each other. For sure. We need him and we need each other. Yep. And that's so, how he's designed it. Right? It's like, yeah. it's just love God, love neighbor. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's the whole gospel mm-hmm. right there. So mm-hmm. it's, mm-hmm. love it. So good. So good. Rem- remember when we were at Zebedee's and they lowered that man after breaking Zeb's roof. <laughs> we did that together, and they got to meet Jesus because of your care for them and your good ideas. Rama <laughs> is beginning to read and write mm. because of you. Mm. He saved you to do all these things. Mm. <laughs> there you go. Get it out. Mm. It's all right. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Where's your hunger? Can you get some water, please? Yeah. All right. I'll find some water. <laughs> Call that deliverance where I come from. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good, though, because, you know, it's just classic, right? She. When you are in sin and you've done something wrong, you're like, I, I'm not worthy to come to be with these people that love God. I'm not worthy to come to the Lord. I'm not worthy to come to service. I'm right. not worthy. You know, you don't feel like you're worthy. Right. And you're right. Like there's there's none <laughs> right. found worthy. And right. yet we're still called mm-hmm. to come yeah. and run to him, turn, you know, repentance means to turn in Hebrew mm-hmm. and run to him. Right. It's not just, I'm sorry, it's come to him, turn and go to him. And that's where she's, she's sorry maybe for what she did, but now they're trying sure. to get her to turn go to him. and actually yeah. come back to him. Right, right. And I think it's, it's she, 
Matthew's reminding her of who she is. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes we need that, you know, we need that with each other. It's like, hey, remember, this is who you are, Tom. You're not this, you're this, like you are this. And That's so right. speaking the truth, speaking the truth in love. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so good. What a what a cool picture of that's discipleship. That's part of discipleship. And so these disciples are mm. being discipled mm. into just being better disciples. That's and now good. they're discipling one another, right? Mm -hmm. As they follow Messiah. That sounds like kind of what like we do. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right? For sure. For sure. Iron sharpening iron. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, should we keep going? Hmm. Hmm. Philip returned with news. John the Baptizer was taken into custody hmm. in the Herod's most heavily blockaded prison. High security. I guess it was pretty bad. They were rough. They hurt him. Hmm. Is Jesus now? Mm hmm. Is Andrew hurt? Just tell me he's going. Don't tell him to be okay. Hmm. Do you need anything? Where is he? In his tent. Should I wait? No. Hmm. I will take you to him. So much going on. So much going on. It's not you. There's quite a lot going on right now. Hmm. Hmm. So it's good to have you back. Hmm. Do you interrupt Jesus when he's praying, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Oh, it's like, I think I wait. His I mom think, said it was okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we interrupt him all the time. He, I get, know, he's, like, he's the one that's constantly making intercession yeah, for us. Right? Exactly. So we're always So it's okay to interrupt. <laughs> yeah. I stand corrected. I think it's okay to interrupt. You sit corrected. I sit corrected. <laughs> well. Sorry. <laughs> but, oh, man, there's so, like, I said this mm. while I was going, but there's so much going on. John the Baptizer is right. in custody. She's coming back. Like, right. Tensions are high. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Oof. One time I asked the Lord, I was like, you know, what's going on with you? And he said, I'm busy. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Pretty so, busy. Yeah. Pretty busy. But he's always available. So <laughs> actually the, the place where John is executed, they Spoiler alert. Found yeah. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Archaeologically it's they, they found it, it's they too. know it, and yeah. Uh, there's been just even recent publications out about it. So anyway, so they, they've actually found the spot where he was executed. How do they? How do they know? Well, they know the place was, where uh, where Herod Ma was Maccabus or something like oh, that. If okay. I remember the name right, I don't know if that's it. But they have done recent excavations there in the last uh, few years, and they uh, think they found the the area where uh, Salome danced and like wow. that all that whole scene. Yeah, so. It's, Crazy it's stuff. in today. It's in uh, Jordan, so it's hmm. on the other side of the oh, the wow. Dead Sea or the Jordan River. Wow! All right, keep going. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to say. Mm. I don't require much. I'm so ashamed. You redeemed me, and I just threw it all away. Well, that's not much of a redemption if it can be lost in a day, is it? Yeah. Mm. 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 I owe you everything. But I just don't think I can do it. Do what? <laughs> Live up to it. Repay you. How could I leave? How could I go back to the place I was? And I didn't even... 
I didn't even come back on my own. Mm. They had to come get me. This is some I real wrestles. Well, that's true. <laughs> but you don't have to. I just want your heart. Mm. A father just wants your heart. Give us that, which you already have. And the rest will come in time. So Yeshua does over and over. He's talking about the heart. Yeah. So I love that they're bringing that out. Yeah. Especially in the, the well, just all over the Gospels, really. But mm. but I love that there's this tension here, mm -hmm. and we like to say that that there's this um, condemnation-free zone, mm. and there's this requirement of perfection. Mm. Meaning, if we don't pursue perfection then it leads to cheap grace, as Bonhoeffer for would sure, say. For sure, for sure. And yet, condemnation-free zone when you don't live up to the perfection. <laughs> right. And, and so when he's saying it's all about your heart, it doesn't mean it's okay to right. sin. No. Right? Right. It's still be perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect. Mm -hmm. And yet when you fall short condemnation freeze. I mean, this is this coexistence of opposites. This right. is a very Hebraic perspective, and there's a tension there. And yet if you swing to one side or the other, it ends up being legalism or cheap grace, essentially. Mm -hmm. So there's, I love the tension they're, they're showing here, that there's no shame on, even though she completely mm. uh, sinned, right? Mm -hmm. For sure. Because she's repentant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really good. Want to keep going? Let's go. Did you really think that you'd never struggle or sin again? <laughs> I think that's an important point right yeah. there, too. <laughs> like, understanding that we are still people in need of forgiveness. And when you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us. That's right. That's like, that's part of the promise. It's like, we are sinners in need of grace. And therefore, we continually need him. Exactly. exactly. It's not like, well, I, I needed him you know, 20 years ago or Good now. whenever I made a covenant with him. It's like we continually need For sure. I like to say I'm a work in progress. <laughs> you are. <laughs> no comment there, please. For that moment was for you. I shouldn't. Someday. But not here. I'm just so sorry. Hmm. She's showing her heart. Yeah, Look beautiful. Look up. I can't. You can? Look at me. I forgive you. Mm. I feel that. Imagine Yeshua saying that like straight to you like that. Wow. That was awesome. <laughs> he who has been forgiven much. Wow. I forgive you. Wow. <laughs> Those words like... Who hasn't fallen short, man? Right? <sighs> I think maybe the whole world needed to hear those words. Thank you, Chosen. <laughs> that was powerful. That was really good. I mean, those are, those are the words that change everything i forgive you oh man it's a game changer all right keep going moving on I know, yeah. life goes on 
Look at that, that's beautiful. Have you been to the synagogue, Rabbi? No, I have not, sir. Why this synagogue, Rabbi? It's not on any of our maps. That's a good question. Have you noticed that no matter where we go recently, we are more and more misunderstood? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> it's a very complicated time. It grieves me that Mary was not welcomed at the synagogue in Jericho when she first arrived in distress. They turned her away? She didn't mention it. Come on, she's a woman. She didn't expect their help, but she needed it. After that, John's arrest. I could say I'm feeling nostalgic for a small town. Hmm. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of his descendants may enter the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord. Even to the 10th generation, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever. Because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way. Shalom. Even to the 10th generation, none of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever. May I see? Because they did not meet you with bread and with what? Excuse me. What are you doing? I like the music there. <laughs> Elam, your friend Elam has a withered hand. Are you a healer? It is not lawful to heal on Sabbath. <laughs> Which one of you who has a sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath will not take hold of it and lift it up? Who are you to speak to our congregation in such a of way? How much more value is this man than a shop is at once? Come here, come stand here. Hey, don't sit down. We don't know this person. You could be a shaman. Is it lawful on Sabbath to do good or to do harm? To save life or to kill? This affliction does not threaten his life. It does not even affect his health. The music's getting me. I love the music right here. <laughs> It's kind of cowboy music. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the cowboy that come into town, you know? So, I just want to comment that yeah. the synagogue yeah. is very much, you can tell they've done an accurate job. Mm. So, we have in Israel, they've excavated, you know, several different first century synagogues. Mm -hmm. And they're about that size. This actually looks like the... The one in Nazareth Village, yeah. which is a, a mm -hmm. replica of mm -hmm. a first century. It looks real similar to that. So mm -hmm. this is, I'd say, a, a very good mm -hmm. context uh, picture, if you will, of what a synagogue would look like, feel like uh, in the first century. So that's pretty cool. It is cool. That's what the, where we love the chosen, right? Because they're doing such a good job of really giving you the for sure the context, and painting the, the, Paint, the picture, more painting. Uh, that, but uh, no, it's painters. Anyway, I'm excited about the healing, but Me I just want to throw that out there. You were a painter for a while, weren't you? <laughs> That's right. Oh, come oh, on. look at that. <laughs> that was color. <laughs> they're, they're all like the boys. Mm -hmm. Right? Don't you want to be on his team? You're serious. Nice. They, that was awesome. That was great. I don't know how he's they did that. <laughs> he like, was supposed to be healed. God would have done it himself. Mm. Interesting point. Mm. Get out. Gladly. Mm. Blasphemer! What is wrong with you? Apparently everything. Wait! What? How dare you? Are they going to send the town guards after us? 
I think those guys are the town guards. All right, so for those of you who didn't see, first he interrupted the reading simply by standing next to the <laughs> guy with a paralyzed hand. Huh? <laughs> the priest. <laughs> <laughs> what? Reaping or harvesting on Shabbat. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, I've been so hungry, I forgot what day it is. You may. Like, okay. <laughs> it's like I, I didn't know honestly like I didn't know that you could do that. <laughs> like is that a, does that taste okay? <laughs> you mean <laughs> I mean like re in reality, not not according to Torah, but right. just like I don't does it taste better? Is it okay? Is that alright? <laughs> so I'm I'm like trying to I'm looking to see how they do this because yeah. So, in the first century, there were different schools of thought. We talked about this in a previous mm -hmm. episode uh, about Hillel and Shammai, and it, even there were there was not a, a completely agreed upon mm -hmm. uh, rule system for what was breaking Sabbath mm -hmm. and what was keeping Sabbath. Right. So, this one in particular, uh, there was you know debate on is that actually mm -hmm. harvesting? Is that is that allowed or not allowed? So, and it, it would make sense, and the, the rabbis talked about how when the Messiah would come, mm -hmm. he would clarify oh, what okay. was appropriate Sabbath keeping and what was not. So the big mm -hmm. debate is what does Sabbath keeping mm -hmm. look like? Mm -hmm. uh, and so he's weighing in here, Yeshua is weighing in saying it's okay to, as you're just walking along, grab some. Now this isn't harvesting, right? They're not running a, sure. a combine through the fields here for sure no definitely right? not definitely not <laughs> or a lawn tractor <laughs> john but, Deere. <laughs> so but he's saying it's okay to you know as you're walking along the way to grab some uh, gleaning exactly it's it's what we what's what we equate to grazing <laughs> i'm just grazing <laughs> is it <laughs> i just made that up <laughs> <laughs> all right let's keep going the mockery of our little synagogue and of Torah. You will tell us your name, your lineage, your... First you, and now your disciples, are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Have you not read what David did when he was in need and was hungry? He entered the house of God in the time of Ahimelech, the priest, and ate the bread of the peasants, which was not lawful for him to eat, but only for the priests. You would compare yourself to David. It was an emergency. Or have you not read in the law how on Shabbat the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath but are guiltless? That's for Levites. Are you a Levite of priestly lineage? Listen carefully. Well, it's careful. Something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Mm. You would not have condemned the guiltless. Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So, the Son of Man Ooh. is Lord, even of the Sabbath. Mm. The Son of Man. Mm. Let's go. I mean... That title, Son of Man, seems to upset a lot of people. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I mean, this is like, whew, this is a, the mic, a mic drop if there ever was one. Right. So, for those who don't know, I'm doing my dissertation mm -hmm. on Sabbath. Mm -hmm. So, but this is, there's so much happening here, but really this is, an, a, a, he's appealing to his authority as the son of man. Right. So he's comparing himself to this figure from Daniel. Yeah. Who, who is the cloud mm -hmm. rider who comes on the mm -hmm. clouds of heaven. Yeah. And he sits and he next to the ancient of days. Right. And so, I mean, he's he's saying that he is divine. He's saying mm -hmm. that he is the son of God. Right. And so he therefore the debate here is not really about Sabbath. 
It's actually about the authority mm. of Yeshua. Yeah. Does he have the authority to do what is he, what he's doing? Does right. he have the authority to decide this is actually kosher on Shabbat and this is not, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they're all the rabbis are debating and they're they're weighing yeah. in. There's different schools and then here we have an authority coming, the the son of man mm -hmm. and the son of God, right. Yeshua himself, and yeah. he's saying this is lawful to do on the Sabbath. Yeah. Life, to give life mm -hmm. is always lawful on the Sabbath. Right, right. It's I love that they are making a big deal out of this too. Mm -hmm. Like they're he's the, the one of the guys was stuttering because he was saying he said he just claimed to be the son of man. You just do it like a a gloss over, you know, the Gospels, Son of Man and other titles will stick out a little bit, but if you know the context like they did, you know that this was a really big deal to say okay. that he is the Son of Man. And so okay. it's not just a small title, like you said, it relates, okay. I think it's Daniel 7 or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like it's a, it's a big deal and what okay. he's saying is yeah. a big claim and, you know, he backs it up. but. You know, it, but it's that's, important. But that's important that he backs it up, yes. right? It's one thing to come on the scene and say, all right, you're the sure. son of man or something. But what? how did he start it off? Yeah. He healed mm -hmm. the man who was crippled, right? right? Just like he healed the paralytic. Mm -hmm. Over and over, you see in the Gospels, he heals when? Mm -hmm. On the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Why does he do that? Mm -hmm. He doesn't do it because he's saying the Sabbath doesn't matter anymore. Right. In fact, even in this scene, he claimed to be what? The Lord of the Sabbath. Right. So it doesn't make any sense that he's like, right. I'm the Lord, and so I'm doing away with the Sabbath. Right. No, he's saying, I have the authority to decide what's kosher mm -hmm. and what's not kosher mm -hmm. on the Sabbath. And healing right. is kosher on the Sabbath. It, the Sabbath is a taste of heaven on earth. Right. So, right. of course, your physical body could be healed on the Sabbath. For sure. Especially because this is when we what, should have a taste of God, yeah. heaven, coming. Yeah. So, our spiritual life matters mm -hmm. well how much more does our physical life also matter right i mean you've seen that he's he's saying that you know the sabbath wasn't made for or the man wasn't made for the sabbath it was sabbath for a man so he's bringing those two principles together even it's like this is important your physical and your spiritual it's it's important they come together right they just went into the synagogue and they were in there for like what five minutes yep not very long healed it was like a drive-by healing almost, <laughs> you know? <laughs> He's like, all right, healed him and deuces. We're, we're out of here, you know? And he did leave peace. Shalom, Shabbat Shalom! Hey! <laughs> That was totally Shabbat Shalom, right? For that guy. Exactly. Well, yeah. yeah. The guy that got well, healed. Well, he was trying to help bring Shabbat Shalom sure. to the other guys, kingdom, you know? Kingdom, kingdom to the earth. Right. That reminds me of joke. Wait, do it. <laughs> <laughs> That reminds me of joke. That reminds me of joke. <laughs> Doest thou have a joke? Uh, thou dust. <laughs> Doest or dust? <laughs> <clears throat>